In the first stage, the pressure exerted by the surrounding gripper on the hard rock of the walls provides the driving force needed by TBM. In the next stage, the systems move forward by fitting the segments of a ring and through the pressure of the truss jacks on those segments. Then while the truss jacks are recoiled, another ring is installed. The new ring enables the head jacks of machine to recoil. By the end of this stage, advanced stages are complete, thus making it possible to repeat the first stage. The muck created by the boring are poured on the conveyor belt, which is then conveyed to the rear gantries and then into the muck car wagons used to evacuate it. While boring and installing segments, in the second gantry, the mucking rail line are mounted on the inlays and invert concrete segments. Pre-cast concrete segments of the tunnel were made at a prefabricated factory equipped with four five-segment moulds including nine complete sets of rings, five extra invert segment and also four sets of eight inlay moulds. The factory worked 24 hours in two shifts. The production process in the factory include concrete casting, accelerated concrete curing, demolding and also carrying the produced segments into an outdoor depot. At any stage of production, the insert connections and embedded parts are put in a mold. The process continues with insert the rebar cage and concreting with special mix design. Then, in order to cure, all the segments are heated for six hours using hot water radiators. The muck created by the boring are poured on the conveyor belt which is then conveyed to the rear gantries and then into the muck car wagons used to evacuate it. The segments are carried from the factory to the depot by using the lifting devices, overhead cranes and lift trucks. The head race tunnel as a waterway of the powerhouse is more than 15 kilometers long. There are some parameters that distinguish the design of this long headrace tunnel from other similar ones. The first one is the hydraulic internal pressure that exceeds at the shaft location up to 200 meters. The second parameter is geological hazards. The tunnel route passes through faulty zones and the high level of underground water in some zones may exceed 500 meters. The surge tank at the end of the headrace tunnel includes an upper chamber, lower chamber and control valve chamber. The construction of the surge shaft is recommended by the raised boring method. The raised boring is equipped by an RVDS system that aligns the route of drilling or reaming in a manner to be in construction tolerances. The excavation method consists of two stages, primary and secondary. In the first stage, the machine drills a borehole with a diameter of 30 centimeters, which excavates the logs used for advanced studies of the geology of the shaft area. Then the drill will be replaced with a reamer rig by the diameter of the shaft, which is three and a half meters in the bottom chamber. In this stage, reaming of the shaft from bottom to top will start. The butterfly valve will control or cut off the flow from the headrace to the shaft in an emergency situation. 
and will be used for inspection and maintenance of the pressure shaft. The design of a concrete shaft which will bear 70 bars of pressure is only achievable by professional engineers. Excavation of this shaft without any middle edits and with allowable tolerances needed for concrete slip forming requires the use of special techniques and equipment. Sri Lanka is located in the south of the Indian Ocean. Uma Oya site is located in the Uva region to meet agricultural demands. Uma Oya project will transfer the turn of the river from Uma Oya and Mahatitola River to Alikota. Uma Oya powerhouse, like all underground hydro power plants, will be constructed as a multi story structure. Challenges during construction of this powerhouse were numerous with regards to added and spaces in a very compact area, which were considered during the preparation of time schedule and method statement.